all these various um uh, you know agencies that are there with us today uh, of course sri kumar will be introducing hani kumar hani kom little later on uh, they are the force behind the entire program today uh, on behalf of all uh, of us here and rotary bangalore rajma vilas i am also the president of rotary bangalore rajma vilas shankar subramanian i welcome you all to this event uh, it's a, a webinar on how Uh, we could make a difference through photography uh rotary rajmal vilas has been uh, you know uh, serving the society for the last 26 years this is the 26th year we do a lot of work in the area of um, uh, disease prevention uh, in the areas of uh, community uh, services uh, youth development uh, and uh, uh, economic uh, development of the community so we do a lot of projects in this area and uh, i'm happy to welcome all the rotarians from across the world and in bangalore as well tgis is a photography club that uh, i founded along with mr anand sharan our mentor and uh, together uh, we created a platform for um, you know enthusiastic photographers to practice uh, their photography skills and created a platform also to exhibit their photographs every year and every year we have an exhibition to raise funds for a charity so we've been doing this since 2002 2003 and um, you know just for the last couple of years because of covid we've not been able to conduct these exhibitions so once the uh, situation is under control we will be back in action of course with the support of honeycomb who's always been there with us all while the international fellowship of rotarian photographers have um uh you know a group of rotarians who are passionate about photography uh headed by our chairperson uh, sunil telkar and secretary nanda gopi uh have uh, uh been very uh, passionate about uh, you know learning the art of photography and spreading the uh, knowledge of photography with rotarians and uh, friends of rotary and over a period of time we have formed a great fellowship and friendship with each other and we hope uh, to do a lot more uh, visits uh, with our friends uh, across the country and also meet people outside the country as well by traveling and connecting with uh, like minded uh, rotarians uh, who are interested in photography so this is these are all the people who are you know come together to put uh, this event together and i have great pleasure in welcoming my dear friends pv and selva our panelists today thank you so much and of course the entire team of honeycomb uh, who have been working very hard to put this uh, program together so i welcome each one of you from all over the world who join us we have close to our 100 people who have already uh, logged in so that's fantastic so i uh, hand over the uh, microphone to uh, shri to take over from here and uh, introduce the panelists shri over to you uh, thank you shankar sir hello all a very warm good evening i uh, hope everyone is at home done with your jobs on your comfy couch to talk about photography it's a very beautiful art that needs no communication you capture it and the memory is etched forever as we have kick started the reels of wonder season 2 we will be broadening the concept of photography for you through words of some eminent speakers i am shri kumar the chief operating officer at honeycomb creative support and i head uh, photo stop the fine art uh, print division of honeycomb honeycomb creative support is a communication design agency based out of bangalore with its branches in mumbai and hyderabad honeycomb caters to uh, uh, to graphic design uh, uh, video production Uh, web design and development and uh, uh, digital marketing now our division photostop cater to artists photographers interior designers home segments and art architects to name a few today on world photography day we welcome three celebrated bangalore based photographers shankar subramanian selva prakash lakshmanan along with venkateshan perumal also known by the name pv let's meet and greet these ace photographers who are going to talk to us about the art a bit deeper into their works that dives down to the depth of their love and passion to tell us about photography for a cause as a catalyst of social change 
and as a tool of heritage conservation. Let me introduce Mr. Shankar Subramanian, President Rotary Raj Mahal Vilas, founder of TGIS and mentor at IFRP. He is also a passionate photographer who has been pursuing the art for the last 15 years. He has woven stories about different places and cultures through travel photography and portraiture. He is also associated with various platforms that do photography for charity and cause. You can also know more about him on uh, www.ushankar.in. Next, I would like to introduce Mr. Selva Prakash Lakshmanan, a proclaimed Bangalore and Chennai-based photographer who, whose works were published in, on portals like New York Times, New York Times Lens Blog, Der Spiegel, Forbes, to name a few. He is also awarded with various national and international awards in photography. You can also know more about him on www.selvaprakash.com. Next, we have PV, a people's photographer, a creative entrepreneur, and the co-founder of Talam, a contemporary art space mostly promoting emerging talents. PV's work for Intact and Sahapedia Foundation allowed him to take up photography for conservation as a unique genre by itself. You can know more about him on www.pv.in or an Insta handle at pv.in. Now, before we start, request all the participants to ask your questions you have in the Q&A box. It will be answered at the end of the session. Now, without any further delay, hear it from the Mastros themselves. Over to you, Shankar, sir. Uh, thank you, Sri. Thank you for that wonderful introduction and kind words. Let me share my screen and will present my first case study. I hope you can see my screen, Sri. Is that is that fine? Yes, 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 sir. It is. Yes, sir. All right. Wonderful, wonderful. So um, the project I want to talk to you about is, but but before I start off, I again from my side, I would like to wish you all a happy World Photography Day, and I'm so thankful to photography because I could meet such wonderful people and see such wonderful places and interact and have a lot of intellectual simulation uh, with this art of uh, uh, photography. So um, I would like to present a project that we did in uh, 2018, a project called Invisible Symptoms of Multiple Sclerosis. And I want to take you through how we went about it and what, was, what happened and how do we conceptualize this and how was the result. So uh, the points for discussion in this particular short presentation are what was the objective, uh, what was the idea, and uh, how the photography exhibition took place, and what was the impact. So uh, a brief introduction about multiple sclerosis. For those of you who are not familiar with this disease, uh, it's a potentially disabling disease of the brain and spinal cord. In, the, in MS, the immune system attacks the protective sheath that covers the nerve fiber. So if you can um, you know, imagine it to be an electrical wire, which is your nerve, and on top of that is a plastic coating, which is the myelin or protein sheath. So what happens is the immune system starts affecting these uh, uh, coating and it uh, creates lesions in the nerves and the spinal column and in the brain. And because of which the communication from the brain gets hampered to the rest of the body due to which a lot of uh, you know, symptoms are experienced by the people, uh, persons with MS. So um, many of you may be hearing it uh, for the first time, uh, this particular uh, you know, uh, disease called multiple sclerosis, uh, but approximately there are 300,000 people in India alone. Uh, uh, they're, they're likely to be there in India with, with MS, but we don't really have the data at this point of time. So we're trying very hard to find, see if we can get the right um, data as to how many people do really have MS. So uh, one of some of the common symptoms, uh, uh, they are is numbness and weakness of the limbs, uh, tremor, lack of coordination, uh, fatigue and body aches, brain fog, 
blurred vision, slurred speech, and tingling sensation. So if you see many of these symptoms, they look like as if the person is drunk. So you suddenly people who do not know much about the disease may think that the person is really drunk at that point of time. Or um, you know they they're up to having some 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 something they're ha having some substances which is making them to act that way. But act actually, it is the uh, communication from the brain which is making do this. So as people are not aware about the disease, and um, they also not they many times when they look at a person outwardly they look very normal, but only when they start speaking or moving then they find that it is. So people really don't understand. They they felt that the MS person, the person with MS is uh, is quite, quite normal. And I don't know why they're behaving like this. So we want one of the things that a group of us uh, photographers wanted to do is sensitize people about these invisible symptoms. That means they're not visible to you openly and bring about awareness of what an MS person goes through. So six photographers from uh, India were given the task of interpreting the photographs to represent the invisible symptoms. Uh, some photographs feature a persons with MS, and some just have volunteers who, who uh, post for us uh, to bring about uh, exactly how it is. We also had one of our uh, friends, Arun Bhatt, who used landscape photographs to interpret um, these symptoms, which was really, really interesting that how do you actually interpret, um, take a landscape picture and try to interpret this with, uh, uh, let's say a blurred vision or a slurred speech. Uh, so that was really, really very interesting. So we all met and we we, we discussed, we brainstormed and looked at, uh, you know, how it, and, in, and what was so beautiful is each of the photographers had their own uh, visual visual thinking about how uh, about how they would interpret these symptoms and what turned out was a fantastic exhibition that uh, arose out of it so um, this was the poster the photographers were arun bhat grish mayachari shitijar shichidar pankaj gupta and um, myself and um, we all gave ourselves uh, around 30, 45 days and we, we came back with our images and we criti criti critiqued each one's images and uh, we gave feedback to them. And what turned out was a, was a, was a fantastic uh, uh, exhibition. Of course, we had Honeycomb there to support us with the prints and the exhibition. And uh, we had some sponsors, corporate sponsors. And of course, we had Rotary Bangalore Raj Mihal Vilas supporting us in this entire uh, event there. And MSSI, Multiple Sclerosis Society of India, was observing what is called the World MS Day. And we were able to bring out this exhibition on the World MS Day to bring about awareness. And the exhibition happened at Chitrakala Parishad, and the sec and later on it moved to the Honeycomb Art Gallery, where we had plenty of visitors who actually visited. So I will I will I will talk about some of those images. Uh, so that was the uh, uh, you know we had some uh, events uh, to introduce this, and and uh, the, these were the posters that were created. So these were some of the images I want I want to show you about, and I, I will I will leave you with some time, and I would like you to see this. This is my dear friend Arun, uh, but a very very dynamic uh, uh, personality. Um, you should meet him. Uh, he is so full of energy, and the way he has dealt with adversity, uh, you know, when when he had MS. Uh, is fantastic. I really love his attitude. And I called him over. I said, Arun, I would like you to be my model and I would like you to be part of my exhibition. And he readily, he, he came down all the way from Chennai to participate in this photo shoot. So we just met at home and we had a, you know, just chat and we started discussing. We said, you know, we started brainstorming ideas and, and said, he said, yeah, let's go ahead. And I'm, and, and I, he said, you tell me what, what is it that you want to do? And I'm, I'm all game. And we just started communicating and and I said that, okay, this is the expression I want, that this is what I want you to do. And and uh, Arun, Arun just, just played along and it was fantastic. I really enjoyed uh, this experience. So, uh, uh, so this was the, the, the first of the series of uh, images that I shot with Arun. I preferred a monochrome um, version because I, I was showing something which is, um, which I want the emotions to stand out and I don't want anything else to interfere. So I, I thought, let, let the uh, emotions do the talking. 
So when 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 people started uh, looking at these images and the images, people came to me and told me that the images were really talking to them. They said some people said it was really difficult to go through the images because they were so emotionally strong and that it uh, they they could really feel what it felt to be a person with MS. So um, here is another uh, uh, image. Uh, I, I had this brain model and I said, okay, there was a symptom called brain fog. You know, the brain fog is something that suddenly uh, the brain gets uh, confused suddenly because there's a lot of things happening there and you're wondering what is happening. We call this a brain fog. So I said, how do I, how do I depict it? And I thought literally let me use this as a brain model and make things blur and you know, present this uh, across as, as uh, brain fog. So what we also did in the exhibition is that we uh, had around around 30, 35 photographs and from all the uh, photographers around 10, or I think around 50 photographs, if I'm uh, not mistaken. So uh, there was a sheet of paper and people were supposed to go and look at this picture and identify what uh, you know, symptom could this be? Invisible symptom could this be? So when people had finished one round, they had really understood all the symptoms very clearly. So and that was another thing that we were able to do with Bring About Awareness is to bring that interaction uh, with the audience. And uh, that's we did by getting them to do a small little quiz and trying asking them to guess, guess what this symptom is. So this is another symptom called uh, MS hug. Uh, it it is uh, the spasticity in you that feels like as if you know all your muscles are tight and you're just there. And I was trying to see how do you do it, and I just saw a rope, uh, you know, hanging near my balcony. I said, okay, Arun, I'm going to just tie you with this and then uh, take a picture. And I and I think he just did a great job in posing for me, and 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 that was MS hug for me. The second picture on the right hand side is uh, uh, depression. Uh, that's another symptom that uh, uh, people go through because they're, you know, this. imagine a young person who has a uh, 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 lot of aspirations, a lot of things that they want to do because uh, MS affects a lot of young people, uh, people who are in the age group of 18 to 35 uh, very often get, and a lot of them are women as well. 65% of people are women. It has got a tendency to affect more women than men. So these are young people who have a lot of aspirations. They had so much of dreams and, and suddenly that MS is coming in the way of their dreams and aspirations. Imagine what they would be going through. So sometimes even when we have a fever or a cold, we feel um, uncomfortable with it. So imagine them every day, they'll have to deal with the uh, um, uh, symptoms of uh, multiple sclerosis. So it requires, uh, you know, hats off to all the warriors. Uh, we call them the MS warriors, how they deal with, uh, uh, with, with, uh, with, with uh, the adversity on a daily basis. Another thing that they, uh, you know, um, have is fatigue. They get tired very easily because uh, uh, because of the movement uh, issues. They don't move so much, so they don't like, they're not able to exercise so much. So the muscles become weak. So even if they do a little bit of a task, they get exhausted. And and people always wonder uh, as to why why is uh, why are they looking? They're looking fine. You know, Arun was looking fine, but why is he why is he getting so tired very fast? Because there's no understanding of multiple sclerosis. Okay. And 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 very often they have severe pain as well, and uh, they they really have to uh, undergo a lot of pain as well. So here's another thing that they a lot of people have vision issues, and that's something that uh, you'll find with uh, people uh, with multiple sclerosis that uh, they have blurred vision or sometimes double vision, and uh, this um, uh, sometimes. Um, you know, I, I was I was thinking how to how to depict this, and what I did is I used a slow shutter speed, and uh, you know, just asked Arun to move a little bit, and he moved a little bit, and and that gave me this uh, double vision, and this is exactly probably how uh, people with multiple crosses feel. Uh, so I wanted to get that feel in, and uh, I said if 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 somebody had MS, how would they look at the world when they had blurred vision? So I I really had to use the depth of field out of focus to bring about that uh, concept as well. So there's, this is double vision and this is blurred vision. 
So this is uh, uh, an interesting experiment by Arun, uh, who said, let me try something completely different. I won't have anybody. I will use uh, landscape pictures to uh, you know, represent. And this is how Arun represented pain. This is another image uh, called balance. There's, uh, uh, you know, this is another symptom that uh, people with MS tend to lose balance. So they need to have, use a walking aid or hold on to things sometimes uh, because they suddenly feel dizzy or they suddenly lose balance because their muscles have become weak and they, they lose uh, balance. This is Shitidhar who said, um, you know, he was one of our youngest uh, team members and uh, you know we he, we were surprised with the quality of pictures that Shitizar brought about because he was the youngest of the lot, and he said that uh, you know this was an image called dizziness, and he said that imagine I was dizzy and I was I was lying down. This is how I probably will look at uh, the world because it, everything looks very dizzy to me, and I have actually been dizzy and I have actually fallen down. Uh, so that's how he interpreted dizziness. And this is uh, Tanya. And uh, uh, she had a, a model who volunteered to pose for her uh, pictures. And uh, Tanya represented spasticity. Uh, we, uh, you know, she went to Kaban Park and she was, low, uh, you know, looking around as to how, what she can use as a prop. And this was an empty tree trunk. And uh, the model was willing to get into the empty tree trunk and get into a kind of a, uh, kind of a, you know, closed uh, uh, pose. And uh, this is how Tanya represented uh, spasticity. This is uh, uh, another of our mentors at uh, TGIS, uh, Girish Mayachari. And uh, he's excellent with uh, uh, you know, photography and as well as uh, composite images as well. So he's used this um, art of uh, using composite images by bringing in um, you know, some graphic element in the photography. And again, another model helped him to bring about this uh, feeling of how the tingling sensation will be uh, when somebody uh, has MS. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, that was uh, uh, the, 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 all the photographers and their works. And of course, I, I really don't have the time to go through all the photographs. So I chose a few, chose a few ones to present uh, before you. And I hope that uh, you uh, got an idea of how the exhibition would have been and what could have kind of impact it would have created on the audience. Of course, we, uh, sorry, I, I, I forgot. There was uh, uh, Pankaj Gupta also. Uh, I, 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 my apologies that I missed out on Pankaj. And, and uh, he had uh, a model who posed for him. And uh, he, this was one of his most interesting images and it was called tired, <laughs> so uh, which represents fatigue. And that was uh, uh, very, very interesting from Pankaj and, um, uh, you know, <clears throat> well received by the audience, uh, all the images of all these photographers. And as far as the impact, we had a lot of uh, media coverage. So there was a lot of uh, awareness and people who came who did not know about multiple sclerosis really got a feel of what a person with multiple sclerosis goes through. So uh, that was uh, my very uh, short uh, presentation. And I hope uh, that you got an idea of how we went about it. And this was a very interesting project. I'm so happy that uh, I could put this project across. And this these pictures were uh, you know, uh, shared on the social media. Uh, it was exhibited in Kolkata. It uh, it it, it was in, uh, internationally. It was shared across the globe as well, and uh, made a quite a bit of impact. These uh, these images. So um, over to the other panelists. But before that, I think Sri Kumar, we have a poll, right? So uh, before we get on to the next speaker. Yes, Shankar sir. Yeah, Vinay, please. Uh, Let's have a quick poll. I'd like all of you to please participate in the poll before we move on to Selva, who will be taking over uh, from here. So Selva, after the poll is over, I would like you to take over and let's hear from you about your wonderful project, Selva. Thank you, Shankar. Thank you.
I think all of them has answered. So can we have the result, Vinay? Thank you so much for participating in the poll. Poll, can we stop sharing and then move on? Can we move on, sir? Okay, can we have the results, please? Yeah. We have about 81% uh, of people who have not attended our last year's session. So that's like all of, most of them are, uh, we are glad that we have got so many new pa participants. Yeah, Shankar sir, yeah, we may continue. Selva, I hand over to you. You can take over the screen from here. Yeah, thank you, Shankar. And uh, thank you for your lovely presentation. And it's very conceptual and uh, very powerful work. And thank you, Nofal and Sri for organizing. And uh, uh, thanks, Shankar and PV for referring my name to part of this presentation on the World Photography Day. And happy World Photography Day to all the participants and other panelists. Um, so uh, I'm, I'm going to open the presentation from here. So largely my uh, personal body of work is largely uh, something with the social or environmental related issue. And uh, uh, I have a different point of view or a, a point of view on uh, the impact of photography uh, in a different period of my age. And uh, when I was with the newspaper, of course, um, if you publish a civic issue on your newspaper and the very next day it will be fixed. So I have a strong belief when I was with the newspaper that photography have a powerful medium which can make a difference. Um, at the same time, when you work on the long-term projects, like mine is one of the long-term projects is Life in Troubled Water, uh, which is, it's not a, uh, going to be carried in a spot news in the very next day, it's largely I work for a couple of years and then it's published in nationally and internationally publications. And uh, my intention is also to sensitize the issue. And uh, so the life in troubled water, I will explain what is, I'm sure like some of them familiar with this body of work and those who are not familiar with uh, this body of work. Uh, can you able to see the screen, right? Yeah, yes, we can. Well. See the we, can we can, yes. we can. Yeah. So I'm uh, so the life in troubled water uh, is a, a body of larger body of work. I work more than ten years uh, to document the Indian coastline. Uh, I have started this story largely as a more of a reportage when I was with the newspaper to document the um, uh, Indian fishermen who goes and fishing in the Sri Lankan water or sometimes international water and sometimes uh, Indian borders uh, who got. Uh, got arrested and killed and tortured by the Sri Lankan Navy. And that's the uh, reportage I initially I was interested in and I visited Rameshwara. And then I start that project and uh, I constantly I interact with these fishermen and I slowly get to know what are the other issues they are facing. And parallelly, that's the same time I also did a uh, coastal management program uh, which is organized by Swedish-based uh, journalist uh, network called uh, Fojo. And it's a kind of a four-week uh, program which largely talks about these uh, coastal environmental issue and fishermen's uh, issues and social and environmental issues, uh, which is related to the coastline. So that apparently interacting with uh, fishermen and um, visiting these places at the same time, uh, attending this course, uh, open up uh, more about these uh, coastal environment. So uh, initially I was interested more about the,
yeah initially i'm more interested about the uh, coastal erosion and uh, of course uh, there are multiple reasons for the coastal erosion of course climate change also play a crucial role at the same time uh, especially in the southern india when you built a, a construction on the coastline and the wind usually moves from south to north and the monsoon changes and it moves back from north to south that's the usual pattern of the sand movement and when you build some uh, structure on the coastline which stops the sand movement on one side so you have a deposit on one side and uh, erosion happening on the other side um that's also another reason of course climate change triggers these um wave movement and wind speed which also aggressive these erosions and um, and especially in india and largely fishermen who lives along the coastline and um, they are the people who pays the bill uh, because of the climate change and the industrial construction along the coastline and uh, there are scientific solutions in the western country they manually move these deposited sands to the other side which will reduce these uh, sea erosion but uh, we we also started that program um, even in orissa and things like that but uh, still uh, you know uh, we are not fully address this issue largely we built the sea wall to stop the erosion and when you built the sea wall and uh, it's again erode the northern or the southern side of the um uh, sea wall depends on the uh, monsoon and the wave pattern and these are the images from chennai and uh, they are expanding the thermal plant and this is another image on the chennai and you can see people who can read tamil you can see that it's a kalivinir which is directly pumping into the sea and also you can see right hand side there is a fuming industry um and that's the same place people you know our children's playing in the water and then we also enjoy in the evening in the beach and but the situation is this is what the real condition of the beaches along the coastlines of the chennai city. this is sewage water isn't it selva sewage yeah water. that's what yeah that's what it says sewage water and um and the evening they comes and just directly put their pipes inside and slightly it's uh, late evening but still you can see the pipe going inside the uh, sea and um, they pump and release the water and this is the fish we catch and eat also yeah and this is another pipeline which is going inside uh, from a factory which is also in chennai and this is a recent uh, images and uh, also show some of the black and white image and you can uh, visually see that despite the sea walls and every monsoon the sea gets violent and then it keep eroding the houses and this is in karnataka and ullal is the place and this is in kochi and you can see the dead mangroves the backdrop of the oil refinery and initially they were using largely these uh, coconut tree stumps to stop the erosion and but uh, that's also not a efficient or effective method and uh, largely we put stones that's also uh, not stopping the erosion but the root cause is as i said that when you stop the sand movement that triggers the erosion and then of course climate change is another major reason for this and i also photographed different uh, sea walls and this is again karnataka and this is in kasarkod region and this is tutukurin and uh, of course when i address this global warming uh, so i uh, uh, the reason for the global warming um, we always thinks that these industries and especially when you see smokes coming out from the factories or a thermal plant and these are the reasons or like even when we saw the you know waste and dump yards and we see these are the reasons but uh, hbo had a brilliant documentary on this and which says this uh, the fuming industries and waste 
uh, are not the reasons for the climate, uh, sorry, climate change. And these are all the symptoms for the climate change. The reason for the climate change is the way we consuming it. And uh, I think the consumer culture is the major culprit. And yeah, so unless it's, you know, we start changing, uh, in terms of especially the consumer culture and it's not going to stop. And this is in Rameshwaram where they are building the sea wall. And you can see the violent sea. Yeah, again, this is from Karnataka. So this project, obviously, when I, I published internationally, I exhibited internationally uh, by exhibiting and, uh, uh, of course, uh, publishing in international and national magazines that reaches the larger audience and uh, hope that seeing that images and uh, supporting text will sensitize this issue. And uh, also, there is a major issue in terms of uh, photography is I probably have a different intention of making these images, but uh, the viewer have their own uh, interpretation. It changes according to the perception. And a little bit of the text or a captioning can guide them how to look at this image. Mm, so that hopefully uh, convey the message to the viewer. And I also, the way I composing it, I make sure those elements are inside the frame and why uh, these uh, environmental disasters happening. And I make sure those elements are in, inside the frame. So the other major issue is like because of the sea erosion, we are losing the beach. And uh, so usually for a fisherman, beach is the major, beach plays a major role for in their livelihood because they sort their catches and they park their boats. And, um, but since we are, you can see that um, there is a, all the boats are parked in one place because now they are losing the beaches. So there is a, breakwater you can see that the other end you can see a sea wall it's a breakwater and this side also you have a breakwater by building these two breakwaters you can save some beaches uh, not getting eroded and that's where all the fishermen comes and park it otherwise it's usually the fishermen parks their um, boats in front of their house and which is no more and uh, even if you open the google earth and if you're going along with a uh, a coastline, you can see a black line going through the sea, which is largely the sea wall. So it's almost most of the beach is eroding and getting worse and worse. And this is what another issue. We think that building up the stone wall will solve the problem, but even a monsoon. The nature is very powerful. You can see that stones are thrown away from, to the road and which is again in the uh, Chennai. Yeah, I can see that uh, this I shot in 2010 or something and then I revisit the same place and they are expanding the thermal plant. That's why I said that uh, you know, why they are building uh, more uh, plants to produce the electricity is like for more factories to produce things. And why factories producing more things because we are buying more and more. And uh, that's consumer culture is the major reason for this climate change. So this project also, talk, you know, I'm trying to capture these 
destructive methods of fishing uh, so it has a multiple stories and when i go to each and every places and uh, i find some uh, unique issues to their geography and i try to capture that this is uh, in kunta region and where they do a shell mining which is also uh, this place is proposed for the thermal plant and after the local people protest against the uh, thermal plant and they drop the idea and which is really rich in biodiversity and people who have visited gokarna and kunta you know that how rich it is so this is how i work and uh, i visit the place two three days and document and then i take one image from the project and then i put it into the larger body of life in troubled water and that's how i work yeah and i also document as part of this uh, project i document the kudangulam uh, protest and um, so yeah and uh, uh, there are a fisherman federation uh, used my images for their advocacy purposes and i hope that's how my image do some sort of a justification and uh, also i believe that uh, people who are seeing these images um, you know make uh, the images make some sort of a sense that is the uh, climate change issue and the kind of an environmental issues which i talks about and whether uh, you know the policy makers making a major change in their policy or not which i don't know but as an individual when you look at these images and uh, even if you are dropping a plastic bottle on the beach and um, you know that's also going to cause some sort of a damage into the environment or if you are throwing a plastic waste into the sewage or something which finally going to you know the sea and which is going to be directly impacted by your activity and so even an individual if these images make some little bit of a changes in a individual i'm sure that makes a huge difference as a collective yeah thank you uh, that's it and uh, i hope i didn't take too much time um, pv is waiting with some brilliant thank work yeah thank you selva that was a wonderful uh, uh, you know powerful images to communicate the message uh, of how we affect the environment um, you know it was really really powerful images thank you selva for sharing that and sharing your journey in life of troubled waters Yeah. Thanks, Shankar. Thanks again. Yeah. Over to PV yeah. and uh, yeah. Before PV starts, I think they have a poll. I think uh, Sri, do you have a? Uh, can we do a quick poll? Yes. Uh, so I would request all of you to please participate in the poll, and then PV can take over from here. Yeah, I think we can end the poll now. Three. Yes, sir. We can end the poll. Yeah. So we have about uh, yeah eighteen percent of experts who are here with us, and uh, and somebody who have tried in the past is also there about eighteen percent, and we have twenty five seven percentage of amateurs who would like to try new things. then who have not tried at all okay there are about 12 person and there are there is 24 person who would like to learn more about it thank you thank you vinay thank you for sharing the poll shankar sir we may continue yep pv the stage is all yours yes let's rock and roll yes uh i am kind of 
amassed and looking at uh, after looking at all the images of shankar and selva i don't know whether i am going to do any justice to the kind of quality of images and also the impact that uh, you guys created in terms of awareness and also change right so let me quickly share uh, my screen um one second <clears throat> Show screen. Okay, I'll go to my presentation. Do you guys see my presentation? Yes, P. V. We can. Yes. yes. Yeah. So, uh, so I'm actually uh, I'm a people photographer. I've been documenting life <clears throat> for over 15 years. Uh, all my photography happened from Bangalore. Uh, so, at some point of time. i mean like shankar was mentioning like selva was mentioning you start something somewhere at some point in time you get hold of something <clears throat> so for me uh, a sudden opportunity of working with intact in 2008 and 2009 uh, gave me a great opportunity to understand what is heritage the need for heritage and uh, the the conservation as a whole right so it is it's very important to understand the need to conserve anything which is old which is heritage right so i will without wasting any time any more because i the introduction was already given but i just wanted to just give a little bit of this i am into this running riding lake lover tree hugger more into oriented towards this so maybe yeah, all of you have to be something like that to conserve some things right so when it comes to heritage he who denies his heritage has no heritage is what is the very powerful statement i would say if you don't understand if you don't want to save your own heritage then literally i mean it, that can be a language that can be your home that can be a building that can be natural heritage that can be built heritage right so we have various things It can be cultural heritage even a festival is a heritage right so with the technology and social media and citizen journalism you me everyone in this room no i saw the i saw the poll where there are some of you who have not even tried a you know dslr amateur or expert you have a camera in hand which is a mobile phone you can create you can sensitize things just with this camera and all of us are citizen journalists and we can create suddenly one day if, uh, be it a uh, uh, small hall uh, heritage building inside lal bag somebody is demolishing and uh, you know somebody takes a photo and share it it could be an accident could be anything right if people are quickly sharing things online so that ways every one of us in this country in this world are photographers holding a mobile phone right so is documenting heritage so important so how many of you have seen this building in bangalore how many of you have seen this building in whether the photo that you see behind uh, in this in this slide so this building is no more now thanks to mg road metro station this building this theater was demolished and a metro station is built on this place right so the moment that because city like bangalore or any of these metro cities which has got a lot of migrant population people move in move out the lot of you know traffic coming and going so they may not know what existed at some point in time so documenting heritage is very important and we are trying to conserve if if you're documenting at least you keep something for the future to see it even if that doesn't exist for the future but conservation is important so i'm just giving I'm, maybe i'll i'll create a I'll, i'll show some slides so this is a google map i've just pulled out something from uh, google earth you can see something which is i mean bangalore this is also a scene from a, a frame from bangalore a lot of greenery around and can any guesses on which area is this any guesses anybody even from the panelists could be lalba could be gabun park right so suddenly stadium. you see suddenly you see stadium okay suddenly you see something big drastic change happening from this previous picture in 2000 mm. when something happened in 2004 mm. 
you see something changed and more construction happening in 2005 more things any guesses 2009 ubc city ubc city okay. yeah. yeah 2012 2015 you see the kind of changes it used to be a nice bungalow one single bungalow for many years hundreds of it's, it's a 100 year old building which we lost and there's a big mall and so many things happened in the first, the first slide that i was showing i was showing even this building this particular building where uh, even which little malaya's house was built now it is sold some 56 crores or something like that right so this is a drastic change happened in like 4 5 years i mean i'm showing a picture of 2004 and 2015 you see in 10 years there's a drastic change thanks to this park the kaban park still remains public spaces had to be saved conserved right i'll show one more there are situations where we kind of refurbish and reuse certain common places public places any guesses anything anything you have seen something like this in bangalore this again a set of images from google earth from bangalore why i am showing this like we also create some kind of a shock imagery when somebody wanted to see okay this is this is was this and suddenly it had become something like this right so any guesses what this place is it was a working jail right in the year 2000 this place is still there when suddenly a new jail was built all this is completely covered into green and trees everything happened and government came back and said okay let's redevelop this and convert into a park right the bangalore central jail in the majestic area was converted into freedom park right sometimes this happens which is a good thing the spaces are not lost it is not become a concrete jungle it is not anything something which is lost at least the space remains the greenery remains and the space is also reused for the public right so why i am sharing all this is to kind of give a sense of why common spaces are important why we have to conserve our heritage right if you see this this is so beautiful when the park was opened up and the kind of greenery they built and they still kept certain things elements for people to use and see and understand the clock tower still remains in the center like you see in the first image right so what we did was uh, intact because i've i've been working with intact for a really long time now since 2000 Eight, nine. We started with creating a set of postcards on uh, the portraits of Bangalore, where a lot of images of the places in Bangalore, uh, mostly intact, is into intact as an NGO which is into heritage conservation. They create awareness about uh, things about all types of heritages, not just the built heritage, but also about cultural heritage, also about the natural heritage. Right. So I've been working with them for a really long uh, time and various projects. I've taken this particular project to show today. and also the impact this particular project uh, you know created or uh, or gave the impact on the audience right this project was called as bangalore to bengaluru then and now right if you see if you have to see uh, a set of images that i'm going to show we used the old archive images from 1985 one mr ayangar k and ayangar he went on to you know document some places which he considered on various factors as heritage there are so many places in 1985 he went and document and he went and studied those places and he noted down on his paper saying this place is heritage because of this 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 reasons these are the things that you see uh, in that particular building in that particular place right so we pulled out these archives from intact from 1985 he used his film cameras and he shot some of these images and then we went in search of those places because some of the references you have just the road you have some numbers which is given as the old number today you may not even find it uh, we were shooting almost for like 30 days we were going around and searching 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 those images and we had an exhibition right so the kind of impact that we created is like we said the green to grass when somebody was looking at this was the 1985 image and what is in today this was the 1985 image and what is in today so we showed something like this and we've exhibited this in lal uh, in in, in kaban park for over a weeks time right lot of people who came in and then who saw the exhibition and then they kind of got a sense of okay what we had and 
it kindled, rekindled their memories in terms of what they saw so many years back, even the old timers, young timers who are coming, oh, we had this. Those who have never seen, you know, a cash pharmacy building, they said, okay, so they know only this glass building, in, which is new on the uh, uh, Richmond, uh, the residency road and the St. Mark's Junction. Uh, they were able to see something which happened in the past. Okay, this is the original cash pharmacy building. Right, so we we could rekindle kindle the minds of people to create an awareness about okay what was there and what is existing today. Right, so I'm going to show some of them quickly. You can you can just get a sense of uh, those spaces. This is a Benson Crossroad, which is a beautiful bungalow, and uh, which is no not there anymore. Now uh, these guys built apartments worth three crore, four crore kind of a value. One whole floor is like one 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 apartment and things like that. Right. This is the cash pharmacy building. You know, most of you must have seen this in Residency Road, Richmond Road, uh, Residency Road, St. Mark's Road Junction. Uh, luckily, you can still see this cash pharmacy, the old cash pharmacy board. They still use that old board, wooden board in this new cash pharmacy also, which is a uh, medical store, right? This is on the Vani Villas Road. This is called the Adalam Heritage Building, originally called also as the Adalam Lodge, right? So. They kind of at least try to show some kind of a replication from the old building to the new building when they demolished the old building and constructed the new building. This again on the Vani Villas Road, they kind of retained some components of the old building. And this is now a, a beautiful uh, 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 Sish Mahal, prestige, uh, the Brigade Sish Mahal is what they call it as a brigade redeveloped the space. And they at least maintained some portions of it which existed uh, in 1985, right? So when we show these kind of images, people were able to kind of see and understand, okay, what was our heritage and what we lost. This is on the Aliaskar Road, this bungalow is still there. I mean, there are examples where uh, when we pulled out almost 800 uh, kind of heritage buildings were existing uh, in, the, in the archive, which is created by uh, Mr. Ayangar. Uh, so when we revisited these places. It's not literally me, but there are a lot of volunteers from Intac and the team revisited in search of these buildings. We could find almost 60% of the buildings are lost. And then most of them were private buildings because they're redeveloped, demolished and things that government buildings remain. As is, this is one of the private buildings which still exist in the same place in the same uh, uh, majestic look. This is again on Cunningham Road. This building still exists the same way it was in 1985, right? This is a very, uh, I would say, this is a very interesting uh, thing for me to talk about because this building, including the tree, right? The coconut tree still exists in this building. And some of them really, really, even after, this is 1985 to 2000, almost 30 years later, right? Things remain in the same way how people wanted and then how they wanted to conserve their own heritage, right? So I, I won't blame people who are demolishing their houses and building something. There are various reasons for them to lose their heritage. In, in fact, uh, there used to be one theater called Elgin Theater, which is one of the oldest in Bangalore, which used to be there in Shivaji Nagar. When the owners uh, uh, were selling off Elgin Theaters, when, when some press reporters asking them, sir, it is uh, like your heritage over 100 years, you've been running this theater for a long time, one of the oldest in Bangalore. Uh, those said, uh, those guys said, can you try asking some funding or something from government to preserve this building? The owners uh, were saying, uh, my mom is also heritage 85 years, 90 years. Is, it doesn't make sense to ask government or somebody support when we had some kind of a issue, when we had to sort issues and we had to lose it and then move on. Right? We can't save certain things at certain situations. There are situations like builders wanted to demolish, they, the builders wanted to build something. They keep pushing the owners also to kind of sell it off and then move on. Or it could be family related uh, issues where they used to have, they must have been like only one person, two person at some point in time. But when the family grows after hundred years, right? It must have been 50 people in the family and then they have to share the property. The same thing happened even with the Rex theater which uh, we, they closed it uh, recently. But of course, they're gonna come back with a modern building, but the Rex Theater heritage is lost as it. In fact, I also documented uh, the Rex Theater, the last, the, the last day, last, last show. Uh, 
so i've been documenting things like this i uh, my areas of interest lies in um, because i lived in bangalore for 15 years most of my work are related to bangalore uh, related to heritage and conservation and lake and water bodies and uh, buildings and things like that and thanks to working with intact right so with this exhibition when we put this exhibition there were a lot of um, coverage in the press people talking about classes is reaching to your city heritage like they showcased then and now in all the uh, press and it like this it was exhibited on the walls of uh, the tennis court in kaban park and it, it it traveled across multiple venues we carried this to schools to you know kindle rekindle the minds of uh, young people right it was well appreciated by various media scroll took it on right uh, indian express uh, business standard everybody carried most of them carried these stories right so the impact if i have to talk about the impact of these images it is just not the newspapers which carried but also affected a lot of people because we overheard stories people telling when the when the exhibition was happening at kaban park or elsewhere right there are old timers they come and say oh yeah we used to go there we used to go to malleshwaram in you know 10 minutes from basanagudi by cycling and things that today we can't go because of various reasons there are so many stories came up and one such person uh, who visited this exhibition um, said i want to do something to this on the particular day i still remember uh, the convener the co conveners of intact uh, meera arvind and uh, the team members at intact uh, bangalore chapter they were telling uh, this person was uh, so uh, interested and so kind of affected by this particular exhibition seeing exhibition i want to do something to the city uh, we lost so much of heritage and we want to do something to the city right one person uh, by name uh, podar uh, basant podar who came and saw this exhibition at kaban park uh, when intact wanted to renovate this fort high school right when they were trying to raise some funds to renovate this particular school which is built in 1907 and uh, this is one of the old, oldest and biggest schools in the fort area which is built during mysore maharaja's time he readily agreed to fund the whole school renovation project which runs into crores almost 2 and 1/2 crores he funded for this project uh i i i'm i'm not saying like you know it is a it's a uh, but just by seeing some images just by seeing an exhibition uh, this person would have just given like that but creating awareness showcasing something talking to people motivating them telling about this and rekindling their minds uh, is very important and this particular school was re uh, renovated and then was handed over to the government of karnataka and the school department the education department is uh, currently running the schools thanks to covid schools are not running but the school uh, is nicely renovated to the old beauty majestic look you can just see we in fact even made a film on this uh, to showcase uh, to the minister and the uh, maharaja of mysore who came to the uh, you know the foundation stone link the the renovation kick starting the renovation project and also to hand over project right to the government of karnataka so all i'm saying is this is very important to use your images the power of images when you say when you show then and now when you show how it was and how it is today it is obviously creating that shock it is giving that impact on uh, the audience minds and also for various things right so when i we currently worked on another project with intact another project with sahapedia where we where i documented uh, the the inscription stones of bangalore now uh, the the mythic society is digitizing those inscription stones which will again remain as a documentation forever even if those stones are lost we can recreate those in 3d model right that kind of a technology usage is still happening and another one uh, that i wanted to just portray before we end this session is uh, the usage of images when it comes to uh, you know preparing some dossier showcasing to the government people showcasing to public showcasing because in you open a newspaper on a daily basis you can see thousands of images an advertisement as a newspaper article or as a this one so why they put those images obviously that creates some kind of a shock or some kind of an impact on on the audience so i was very happy to work on a project uh, with intact uh, in belur and halibid and some of these uh, hoysala architecture places to prepare dossier 
to bring them into uh, the UNESCO listing uh, soon. Hopefully we get that. So conservation, the images for conservation uh, gives me that kind of happiness to make these images and to move on from there, right? So I, I, I end this session at this. I know when, oh, I hope I've uh, followed the timings. Mm, like I said, uh, the, uh, images, for, images for cause, images for change, and images for conservation. These are not the best of the best images that I, 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 I showcased, but they had that impact on the audience uh, they could see, right? So I'll be happy to take any questions. I'll, I'll share this, I'll stop this uh, share and uh, to move on from there. Uh, Shankar, Sri, over to you. Evie, what a fantastic uh, effort, uh, you know, from your side to bring about the awareness and, uh, you know, the time and energy and effort that you have spent uh, uh, in trying to bring about this. And so Selva, uh, many, many years, it's just not just, uh, just go around like one day and just bring some pictures, but it's about lots and lots of uh, investment and, um, and I and I can what I can see from both of you and Selva is the passion that you have for the cause that is reflecting in your works and that's that's really really very interesting. I think we have uh, some questions uh, that our audience uh, um, I have. And if there is a poll, can... then we can finish it and then go to questions. Yes, yes, yes. All right. We we shall we uh, Sri shall we have the last yeah. poll? Yeah. yeah. Poll question is, uh, do you print your photographs at all? Yeah. Right. Uh, I think we can end the poll free. Yes, sir. So here we have uh, we have about forty people who does who do printing, and uh, thirty seven percent who who, do, who have not tried it at all, and some people do intend to print. That's about nine percent, and fourteen percent would like to know more. So please connect with me. I will just mention my details on the chat. Please connect with me. We would be glad to uh, help you out as we do uh, fine art prints for photographers and artists and as well as individuals. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Shankar, sir, please uh, carry on with the uh, question. And answer. Okay. Right. So um, I would request all of you to please use the Q&A function, uh, uh, which is there on the right-hand side of your bottom screen to ask your questions. Um, so we'll try to see how much of them uh, that we could take. What kind of questions we would like to take is uh, more about uh, photography and uh, cause. Uh, we, we either don't want to do it, take up completely about photography or completely about uh, the cause and because we'll get digressed because this, this is about photography making a difference. So we'd like you to ask us questions around the uh, space of how we could use photography for a cause and what goes in uh, as part of it. So... Um, so, so there is a question from Abhijit Bura. Probably I will address it to Selva because it's very close to what uh, he's doing. So I'm an amateur life, wildlife conservationist and climate change activist. How, do, how to make a difference or how to showcase impact of human destructive activities on flora and fauna? It's a very interesting question. So Selva, would you like to uh, take that uh, question? Yeah, thank you, uh, Shankar. Yeah, Abhijit, uh, yeah, that's a, a good question. And uh, of course, uh, there are many wildlife photographers and uh, largely they shoot the animal behavior and things like that. Um, but uh, wildlife conservation uh, point of view, you can address the, uh, I don't know what, uh, I think you already have a kind of a story idea. And you pro if you know which area, this specific issue is happening. Of course, everywhere it's happening, but visually, which one you can be able to document? And um, that's the first question. And do you have an access for such story? And uh, then you can start that. And uh, how to go about it? That's a question, right? 
uh, how to make a difference or how to showcase the impact of human destruction that's the question yeah you have to photograph those destruction i think that's the way you can uh, show the impact and uh, so i think maybe he is also talking about where could he probably maybe publish it or display it or you know how could he take these stories to the public so photographing maybe one part of it but the second okay. is how do you okay. take these take these stories where should i go with this okay now i've got all these pictures now what should i do with it should i have an exhibition should i i think that's more or less that's the kind of uh, yeah question. okay got it yeah so in that case like if you have a story or you already start working on it and uh, how to reach larger audience and uh, as we all using the term sensitizing the issue and uh, so uh, uh, of course you have to choose whatever the possible mediums which is one is like uh, publishing in the uh, magazines and newspaper and make sure which has the larger reach and uh, you have to write to the photo editor and with a kind of a brief um, saying what is the story about and link to see the work and you start pitching the story to the different publication and uh, that's one way and of course there is another route is like exhibiting and uh, the difference is like um, exhibiting in a reputed gallery and uh, it's always many people says that where the policy makers comes and see and because the gallery space is kind of a, you know niche audience and um, that's they are closely associated with the policy makers so that's another way to put that and um, uh, these are the two possible ways and uh, i'm sure i have uh, given my instagram id if you want a specific connection for any photo editor or something please get uh, get in touch with me i can share the email id or something you can write to them then that's the possible way to publish it if your story is powerful even national geographic will likes to publish it like that's just a matter of how strong it is that's it yeah so i think we have some comments as well bharti das and danraj says we clearly understood after the session how powerful photography is and so they like to uh, thank the speaker i, th- I think uh, this is after pv session so i'm guessing the compliment uh, goes to you pv <laughs> <laughs> it is it is for all <laughs> all right and uh, i think sham um, uh, sham was asking uh, why did you like uh, photography and why do you like photography i think so maybe we can we can look at it uh, pv i think I'll, i'll i'll modify that question a little bit uh, it's okay Uh, we have a video uh, option nowadays and we have a photography option so if you look at both these options photography and video i think each of them have got their pros and cons as such so typically what is it that photograph does that the video doesn't do <laughs> it's uh, uh, yeah the photography is just a moment which is frozen moment obviously but that there are there are different likings on different people some people like still like even though insta has all these uh, reels and things like that they're still in, there are people who are still telling uh, insta is killing photos all right so what is happening is people like photograph for certain um, specifics of it which video doesn't offer but i think i'll i'll relook at his question again why do you like photograph so it's one of the easiest things that we can do right <laughs> so if i if you ask me to draw something i'll not be able to draw if you ask me to sing i can't sing so there are people who took up photography as a hobby initially i mean uh, like me who's who never studied photography who never had an option um, or or literally uh, did a viscom or a mass cam or something right so it it happened as a hobby but it slowly you get hooked into things and then move on to you know professional level okay so photography takes you it's not like you take up photography so it took on the other side thanks thanks pv what about you selva what's your uh, view on the fact that uh, you know video um, you know and and uh, photography i think there's a big uh, you know I, i think each one of them are have their own space but what does photography really uh, uh, do in terms of uh, 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 that that the video sometimes is not able to do it. 
Uh, yeah, uh, I think it's a two different medium and each medium has its own charm. And uh, of course, uh, video have sometimes more powerful and um, you have to choose. I, I think we have to wisely choose which medium. So I think that's the question. I think I relate to the previous question, why you like photography? And uh, even if it sounds like a kind of a, a gyan, uh, but uh, um, that's what I believe. Uh, so, you know, you pick up some medium, I don't know, whatever the medium, because you have something to say. And uh, what is important is what you have to say first. You, do you have something to say? Then you have to choose which medium works well. And some people write, some people, people speak, and some people make documentaries. Some people take cinema and uh, that's the medium they believe which is more efficient. And uh, uh, I think uh, you, me and PV uh, chose a uh, photo now. And in case tomorrow something comes up, uh, something we want to say, but video probably do it very powerful and we will shift into that. That's I think that's absolutely fine because it's end of the day, you are you and me are storyteller. And which medium works well, we'll move to that. And uh, I have no permanent romance with uh, camera, <laughs> photography. And uh, so you have to choose accordingly which one works well, yeah. Right, right. Thanks, yeah. Salva. I yeah. think we have one question. Uh, of course, uh, PV is uh, answering questions on the heritage questions that Sanjana is asking. She, he is answering on the chat. Uh, Mukund has asked some questions about... Uh, you know, soil erosion, whether stones will stop it. So maybe Selva could just answer it on the chat. Uh, if you could look at the question, the question says, building up stones or anything won't stop these erosions. Uh, uh, why there's no permanent solution? Why can't we stop sewage tankers from throwing waste and all that? So maybe you could use the chat uh, function yeah. Silva, to just type in that answer for paucity of time. Um, I'll... I'll uh, request... Uh, Sri Jit Sri Kandan has asked a question. Uh, do we have any organizations on photography for a cause? <laughs> That's an interesting uh, question. So, PV, uh, would you like to talk about that? Is are there any specific organizations who only specialize in, you know, say, let's say we, we work for a cause only or something like that? No, I I'm not able to think any of them. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> one one thing is most of these NGOs. Whenever there is a NGO, when we say non-government organization, they're doing something for a cause. The organization was built for a cause, right, by itself. So all the needs that they have would be, again, doing something like, like Intag is one of them. Uh, your uh, Rotary could be one of them, right? The Sangapedia Foundation could be one of them. So all these NGOs, non-profit organizations, non-government organizations could be the, the organizations for you know, which will which will need photography for cost that way, yes. Right, right, right. Thanks, thanks, PV. Uh, so there's some general questions like, you know, uh, how does, um, you know, this is gen general photography questions, right? So this, I mean, if Selva and PV, you could all pitch into this. What takes, uh, you know, uh, to be a, you know, a good photographer? How do you, how do you, how do you get to be a good photographer? <laughs> it's it's a million dollar question. So I mean, I mean, I want to know from PV and Selva for, of course. <laughs> so yes, uh, would uh, would Selva would like to go first and then PV? Uh, uh, come again? Oh, I said, what what, what what does it take to be a good photographer? That's the question uh, that Mukund has asked. So, how do you get to be a good photographer? Good photographer to Mukund or Shankar or PV. <laughs> no, if somebody wants to be a good photographer, how do they? How no, do they that's get right. To... I think who yeah. decides that? That's a yeah. uh, that's a question. Uh, I I I think I said that in the beginning. Uh, I don't know whether I said that or not. Okay, at a multiple session. So, yeah, uh, I think nobody is going to read your poem just because of your handwriting is beautiful, and people read poems because the poems. Uh, kind of uh, emote some sort of an emotions and uh, or something close to your heart. That's why you say this is my favorite poem or you are poet. Like that, uh, I believe the photography is not just the aesthetics and what it says to the uh, audience. 
and is it uh, asking some questions or is it makes some sort of a emotion or we are talking about is it uh, make some sort of a sensitize uh, some issue and uh, that's how whether the photo is powerful or not i would say rather than good or bad and is it powerful enough to may, uh, evoke some sort of an emotion or evoke some sort of a question i think uh, rather using the good or bad and is it right. powerful enough yeah I would say right. That, yeah. Thanks. PV thanks, Selva. Yeah, yeah. To append uh, to what Selva was telling, um, I also have the same opinion because photography is a very subjective matter. Uh, the beauty lies in the uh, eyes. Yeah. Eyes of the beholder is what we always say. I mean, if I shoot my daughter, and uh, I always like, oh, yeah, it's a beautiful girl, and we have a picture of uh, daughter, right? When we always say Taj Mahal is beautiful, and this picture is so nice, right? So there are so many things. It depends on the subject. At the same time. there are situations if i ask you to remember can you remind of, uh, are you uh, can you can you think of any good photo that you saw in the newspaper today or like last week or in the last year so you'll always think about okay there's trolley being taken with a baby sitting on that during the migration of you know the covid times i could just think of that and or maybe the uh, afghanistan issue where suddenly somebody is like going running behind the you know your uh, aircraft or 2012 when godra issue was happening one guy was begging please leave me right kind of images these are the powerful images which will have long lasting uh, memory in people but again it's very subjective some people will still remember the beautiful you know um, sunrise or a moonrise in taj mahal right Th- thanks thanks pv i think we are also running short of time there's um um you know uh, we, we will take one uh, last question i'll just modify it to make it more generalized um you know one person can we make a difference and as a single person with a camera can we really make a difference and that's i would like to take this as a last question for i think both pv and uh, selva can i make a difference with my camera as a single person no both selva and i put that question to you <laughs> oh uh, all right so i so was going to put the question back to me so my my answer to that would be so i i'm asking my question i'm answering it myself huh? baby <laughs> so we shall, we shall answer that if if your answer is not uh, not up to the mark <laughs> okay all right so so i think my my question is that uh, uh, it is a story of a person who is walking on the beach and there are some uh, these organisms uh, from the sea which have been washed on to the shore and the millions of them lying all over and there's a little child who's going and taking that and putting back into the sea and you know trying to save those but there are the, the whole sea is littered with those small organisms so the father asked the child you know see you know uh, i mean how many are going to save today and the child said for that particular organism which i threw back into the sea it is made a difference so let me see whatever i can do i think i think i need to approach the subject that way that whatever i can do i may not be able to educate 1.3 billion people with my about multiple sclerosis but maybe i i talk to 300 people or 400 people in the exhibition and through the newspaper it reached to maybe 1 lakh people i was able to reach 1 lakh 300 people <laughs> so i think so be it at least i was able to do that and uh, i will keep on doing that till it reaches as many people as i can i think that that's what i would do and i i, I know that i really can't change the world but but let me try to do as much as i can and that's where i would say but i don't know what selva and pv what do you have to say about it yes selva yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. i think there are uh, there are project which uh, made a huge uh, changes and uh, i don't have the right link to post it now and uh, yeah they did a project in uh, east africa about uh, rape victims and he generated a huge fund and he set up an ngo and he raised a huge fund for those rape victims and uh, and they they are ch- they support their child so as an individual definitely but uh, i think we had a discussion uh, on the demo uh, session i think uh, but you have to start with that intention man why you are doing the project you are going to make a change 
in a specific community, then you have to go with the plan. So you have to tie up with an NGO who is already working on that. And it can't be you finish a project, then you start looking to change through your image. And it should be come from the very beginning, how you are going to uh, shoot the image and where you are going to publish, you are going to collaborate with whom, and all that strategy has to be placed before starting the project. And that's how it works rather than uh, randomly shooting and then later uh, expecting that to change. And uh, yeah. So oh, that's, the, that's the big difference. Like Selva was mentioning, collaboration is the key. Even in one of my slides, I put that. Because if I'm not working with that organization to do something that we can just showcase somewhere for a specific reason, you're going and doing something, right? Then it creates a bigger impact. If you're just shooting and keeping in your hard drive, it doesn't make any impact or very little impact when you showcase in your own spaces or your own Flickr page or a Facebook page. So collaboration is key. Work towards that particular project with specific reasons and points. Like you know, any organization is giving a grant, they expect something out of it, right? So they there should be something produced back as to be a as to be delivered as a output. The same way. That collaboration is key. Agreed, agreed, uh, PV, and thank you, Selva, PV, for really. I think there are two two more questions or something you can answer. I think one. we have run out of time, so okay, maybe we okay. can take it offline. <laughs> so okay, maybe we can okay. answer in chat or something. So sure. uh, I think we'll have to close, Selva. Uh, okay. So Selva and PV, thank you so much for being a part of this uh, session today. I request Sri Kumar to take over uh, and uh, do the closures. And thank you all for this wonderful session. Over to Sri. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, everyone who has joined us today. Your valuable presence and active participation made the event a memorable one. I uh, hope you all enjoyed this session. I take this uh, opportunity to thank Selva Prakash, PV, and Shankar, sir. Uh, this session has been very insightful and inspiring and shows us how we can make a difference through photography. Uh, in case if you want to rewatch the webinar and share it among your friends and family, please uh, follow, us, follow us on our YouTube uh, channel, Honeycomb Creative Support. We will also be mailing you the whole recording in three days' time. Uh, your valuable feedback is important to us, so kindly write to us at namaste at uh, honeycombindia.net. I would also like to thank uh, Rotary Rajmahal Vilas. Uh, IFRP, TGIS, and my team at Honeycomb for making this webinar happen successfully. Thank you once again. Thank, thank, you. thank, you. thank, you, thank you. Thank you, Shri. Shankar. Thank you, Selva. Thank you. Thank you, thank thank you. you everybody. Thank, thank you, everybody who has uh, been a part of this session today. Thanks for all the Rotarians, TGIS members, uh, IFRP members, and all our dear friends who made it today for this session. Thank Happy you. Happy Photography Day again. <laughs> Yes, let's all shoot. <laughs> Thank you.